Tango Whiskey, this is 7-6. Tango Whiskey, do you copy? I was 7-6, and Tango Whiskey, TW, was this uh, girl I first met as a 16-year-old, cute, shy. I remember her sitting at a keyboard, wonder on the piano, and she had these silly glasses and this outfit imitating Elton John. In college, we did our accounting homework together. We went jogging together. In fact, um, while she was dating another guy, we entered a fun run together, and we ended up on the front page of the school paper. And she was sitting in the cafeteria with this other guy when he saw the paper. And she kind of looked the other way, and he says, huh, I didn't know you went in that race with Carl. Well, there were a lot of things that a lot of us didn't know at that time. One thing I was pretty sure of when I popped the question to her, though, was that she would say yes. And she said, I'll go with you anywhere. Six weeks after we were married, we were in Africa. We had two beautiful little girls come into our lives. She gave birth to Mindy and Lisa during that first six-year tour, and during the time we were back at home before our next six-year tour, another little guy came into our lives, Sean, a little red. I thought it was going to be a girl. I said, the only thing better than two girls is three. <laughs> and, and instead of a little dark head coming out, when he was born here was this blondish red. And, and then I'm like, it's a boy. <laughs> and we took our family back to Rwanda, beautiful little country in the center of Africa. I'd like to show you a little girl and actually several children from Rwanda um, to get you an I to, to just get an idea of um, it was a pouring down rain this day just uh, back in December when I went back to visit again. Rwanda is a, a country of of beauty, mystery, people of of generous hearts, of resilience, and yeah, poverty, but but they recognize there's so much more to life than poverty. And then this little country was, was engulfed in a tsunami-like slaughter, tsunami-like in speed, tsunami-like in scope, that enveloped this little country in, in, in one huge 100-day gulp. Tango whiskey. Seven six Tango Whiskey, do you copy? I think all of you probably know what it is to stand alone. And what a difference when you have somebody standing by your side. When the world tells you one thing and your heart tells you another thing. When your boss, who happens to be your church, says, leave Rwanda. And your heart says, stay. When your homeland, the United States government, says, leave Rwanda, sign on a little paper that you refuse the help of the United States government to leave Rwanda, and your heart says, stay. When your family says, leave, what good are you to these people dead? Your brothers, your parents, and your heart says, stay. What do you do? Tango Whiskey, this is 7-6. Tango Whiskey, do you copy? We spoke every day during the genocide. Tango Whiskey, why don't you come here for a minute? I told her I had a surprise this evening, but I didn't tell her what. It's easier to ask forgiveness sometimes. back in the bedroom and we asked our Creator what to do and together we made the decision that she and the children would leave and I would stay. Together we both received a peace that it was the right thing to do. 
without that decision together, I wouldn't be here tonight. I wouldn't be sharing stories about Rwanda. I wouldn't be able to tell you about the courage, the resilience, and the generosity of the Rwandan people. When we made that decision, we learned a lot about ourselves. We learned a lot about our maker. We learned a lot about people. Some wonderful things and some horrible things. One of the big things, though, that I learned was don't take for granted the people closest to you. Speak value into their lives. Act value into their lives. So Tango Whiskey, <laughs> thank you for being at the other end of those radio waves, for making me cry and making me laugh and inspiring me to act to put others first the way you do. Love ya. <laughs> Everything that happens is an opportunity. And every opportunity demands a decision. Was at Boston Latin yesterday. One of the students there said, how did you know what to do every day? I said, well, everything that happens is an opportunity. And every opportunity demands a decision. Two, three houses down from our home in Kigali, we had been there for four years. Three houses down was a, was a house full of orphans, 30 little ones, five and under. The, the um, Rwandan gentleman and his Belgian wife who were running that orphanage chose to leave when the genocide started, leaving those 30 children behind. And Harry, the night watchman, Harry was from Zaire. Harry could have fled the country too with the others. But Harry went from being night watchman to orphanage director overnight. And for those hundred days of slaughter, Harry guarded those children, literally with his life. He negotiated with the, with the militiamen. He shared orphan food with the militiamen. And some people say, that's so wrong. No, no, no. Don't be sitting in judgment. Harry formed relationships. Harry put others first. I came home one evening and got word that a mortar had fallen in that yard. And, and one of those little ones was gone. A playmate who was close, she was about three years old, had been wounded. Some of the military had given her some bandages. I remember especially they asked me to come. I'd kind of become the neighborhood doctor because of the situation. And um, I went over under candlelight the next evening to change the bandages. And she was so courageous. She didn't call, fall back. She didn't whimper. She looked trustingly into my eyes.